Are you ready for lesson six? You've been working on figures of speech, which is the way that language does something unusual to convey some kind of meaning. And we worked with symbols, we worked with metaphors, which are extended symbols, we worked with irony. And this is going to prepare you for a very powerful lesson on Hebrew poetry. Now, about 40%, that's 4-0, 40% of the biblical, of the Hebrew text is poetic, is, is done in this, in this poetry. So you need to know what the poetry is, and you need, how, need to know how it takes you into deeper meaning. You can't just plain read it. There's more to it than that. Okay, so I call it the mysterious artistry of Hebrew poetry. And I keep telling people that the biblical Hebrew is a very artistic language. And it's mysterious because you can't get it in the surface. You've, it's going to lead you into something deeper. The first thing with poetry is you have to listen because Hebrew poetry doesn't rhyme. Um, you know, American poetry rhymes. Hebrew poetry does not rhyme. It's identified by rhythm. There's, as you read it, and you can read it in English, and you can capture that rhythm. And the rhythm is going to evoke emotion. Hebrew is incredible about stimulating all your senses, all your emotions, <laughs> okay? So the first thing you do is to listen for the rhythm that evokes emotion. The second thing is to organize the lines because there is meaning in the artistic structure of the poetic lines. Poetry is done with what we call parallel lines. So there's, they're in parallel. There's some relationship between them. And they're done in an artistic structure that is going to lead to meaning. So first, you listen, and you, and you let the rhythm evoke the emotion. And then you have to organize these lines. Finally, you can penetrate. Now, there's going to be a relationship between the parallel lines. And the relationship is concealing these mysteries. And you're going to be able to pull out these mysteries by, by reading poetry the way the people of ancient Israel would have listened to the poetry. They didn't read it. They listened to it. So it's good if you can read it aloud or it's in your mind. Say it aloud. OK, the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to give you an example. And we're going to listen to the rhythm. You, I, I want you to hear the rhythm. And I want it to soak in so that it, it evokes an emotion. You ready? How blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. How blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Now we used, we worked on ruach, spirit, and in this case it's the spirit of mankind. So in whose spirit in mankind there is no deceit. That was referring to the inner part of him. So it's parallel because we have how blessed, how blessed. So let me read it again. Listen to the rhythm. Maybe even close your eyes. And let the emotion come out. How blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. How blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. All right, that's the rhythm that evokes emotion. Number two organize it into an artistic structure. Well, we're going to begin by identifying the two parts. They both start with how blessed. How blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered? How blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and whose spirit there is no deceit? <laughs> okay, and I did that on purpose because I want you to see how blessed, how blessed. All right, now there's more to organize. We're going to take the first one, how blessed is he? And what I've done is I have indented the next two lines. So how blessed is he is standing alone. And then the next two are in parallel, and they're describing the person who is blessed. That's the relationship. They're describing the person who is blessed. So that's the relationship of the parallel lines to the one that stands alone, how blessed is he? 
Now, what makes them parallel? Transgression is in parallel with sin. They're, they're similar. They're synonyms. They mean the same thing. So the, the, he's blessed if the transgression is forgiven, the sin is covered. All right, And you, you see that how we're organizing these lines, and I want you to do it, and I want you to learn how to indent uh, so that you can organize them. You can see them. You can see the parallel lines. You can see the relationships. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to our channel to receive updates on our newest videos. Visit BibleInteract.tv for more in-depth video teachings and keep up with us on Facebook and Twitter. Click on the links next to me to view more videos like this one and become a donor on our Patreon page. Join us in uncovering the hidden meanings in Scripture.